I've developed a value proposition definition. And what I'd like to suggest is that the value proposition is our process for showing what's different about us. It's about describing the promises that we keep for customers, showing them how we keep these promises, while tackling head on some real and perceived customer concerns about the effort that they need to make to actually do business with us. And the rest of the session focuses really on some tools that I hope you find useful in doing them. Here is an example um, of a very clear statement of what a company does. This is FreshBooks. And what they do is non-accounting software for SMEs. And critically, um, this is an older version of some of the website material that they develop. Their proposition is very clear in terms of what they do, namely small business accounting software designed for you, the non-accountant. And you can see in the top right-hand corner, they're encouraging you to try it for free. However, in response to market conditions, what they've done is they're constantly rebooting their value proposition. FreshBooks rebooted value proposition is all about inviting you to get started, to get an offer, to try the product for yourself. It's all about expressing to customers that there are low risks in terms of working with them. As you can see in the bottom right-hand corner, there are approvals and ratings for the product, and they're encouraging you to make a start. They're showing you some of the format. And as you can even see in the bottom footer, they have included a COVID-19 business resource hub that provides you with useful links. They're constantly updating their value proposition to take account of the market or the environment that they're in. What they've also done is, in response to feedback, I imagine, they have looked at their costs, their pricing, and the options they make available to clients. And they very explicitly set that out in their website. And you can see they've even identified what is their most popular starter product for people who are interested in the sector and taking on an accounting product. And what they do is they encourage people to call us. Let's have an online chat. Let's schedule a live demo because they've identified that reducing the risk, showing people how easy it is to adopt the product is a key part of their value proposition. They're even inviting people to try it yourself for free because there's lots of research to show that when people do this, it gives traction to the product and they're making an offer and they're inviting people to pick the option which suits you best. And again, the research would suggest that when you provide people with multiple options, it can aid the process of identifying what's the best package or price for them. You can see in the case of Uber, in terms of their value proposition, a key difference that they offer is how are they different from traditional taxi experiences? They will say the way to use Uber is you simply tap, download the app, the car arrives directly to you, your driver knows exactly where to go, and it's a cashless exchange process, which is critically important in the current environment, and it provides you with more reasons for doing it. It also lists the promise that it aims to keep for their customers, and it lists them explicitly. Again, part of its value proposition. In this example, um, the company has used Paul Chapman, Chief Information Officer of the company Box, to do a testimonial. And there's lots of evidence to show that this very cost-effective method that can be used on a whole variety of online platforms and on your website can be a very cost-efficient and affordable selling tool. Also, when it's created correctly, a lot of customers record this as being highly believable. And that makes it a very favorable part of the value proposition. You're explaining to people um, what it is that customers say, and customer testimonials, as we know, can be critically important. In this example, I like it because it projects a feeling. And the feeling is the happiness of the people who decided to install the solar panels. In the case of the testimonial, what it also does is it expresses how effortless it was to do business, what the low risks were, and how in terms of the cost, there was a significant return on investment and in that their electricity bills dropped by, I believe, up to 50%. So you can see how the power of the testimonial is very, very strong in this example. 